I reversed osteoporosis at the age of 61 without the bone drugs. I'm always focusing on how to boost bone strength and bone density in natural ways. It is possible. Hi, I'm Glory B, and this is Glory B TV, a lifestyle channel for mature women who want to look fabulous, feel amazing, and age gracefully. Perhaps you have some tips that have helped you gain bone density. If you do, please tell us about it in a comment below the video. If you don't have any tips yet, let me know in the comments what you think about my tips. And here are my tips for naturally increasing your bone strength and density. My first tip is to make exercise a priority by adding it to your actual schedule. I was talking with a friend about this and I mentioned that the only way I can stick to a regular exercise routine is by scheduling it. Years ago, I used to work out at the gym in the late afternoon, but now I need to fit my exercise in first thing in the morning. If you have osteoporosis or osteopenia, there are various weight-bearing exercises you can do, like weight training. You can either join a gym near your home or work, or purchase some weights to use at home and learn how to use them. Resistance training with bands is also a great option, and some bone strengthening exercises like push-ups and wall sits don't even require any equipment. Dr. Shostak once gave me advice on how to build up to doing 100 push-ups, even when I could only do two push-ups at a time at the start. I covered all of that in this video. Dr. Shostak and I also talked about different exercises in this video, including how to gradually increase your endurance to hold a wall sit for two full minutes. And of course, walking is a great low impact way to strengthen bones. I always wear running shoes for exercise since they provide the best support for handling impact. To step up your bone building exercises, I recommend adding heel drops and march walking to your exercise routine. I demonstrated how to do these in this video. Now, some people prefer doing heel drops without shoes and some prefer to wear shoes. If your osteoporosis isn't too severe, you might also try stomping exercises, which I demonstrated in this video. You can do these for one minute at a time any time during the day. If you have osteopenia or if your osteoporosis like mine was limited to one area and it was just beyond osteopenia, jumping is one of the best exercises you can do. I demonstrated how I do the jumping exercises in this video and I also have a jump with me video where we do the jumps together and work in some other exercises in between the jumps. After being diagnosed with osteoporosis in my lumbar spine, I incorporated these jumps into my routine. I followed a bone study on jumping, which is linked in the description box of that video. While I'm on the topic of the description box, make sure you know how to open it. Everything I tell you about is linked in the video's description box. To get to it, go below the video and tap or click the word more. Then on a phone or tablet, you have to click the word more a second time, then scroll through the box to find videos I'm mentioning, any products I mentioned, articles I mentioned, really anything and everything will be there. I'll also put everything in the first pinned comment. Now, what other exercises can you do? Well, a few years ago, I realized that falling is something to avoid at all costs. To prevent falls, I focus on strengthening my entire core area, including the abdominals and the glutes. And I also stretch deeply into the hips, quads, and hamstrings. Now I've created two videos for strengthening the glutes, one for beginners and one for intermediate levels, and two videos for the abdominals, also at beginner and intermediate levels. I also have two additional videos with exercises designed to help prevent falls which becomes even more crucial as we age. The bottom line is, if you're not already doing these types of exercises regularly, it's time to add them to your schedule. I wake up at 5 a.m. Monday through Friday and make them my first priority, ensuring nothing interferes with this vital part of naturally boosting my bone strength and density. 
My second tip is to be mindful of what you eat. When your body is more alkaline internally, it enhances your bone's ability to build strong, healthy bone at the cellular level. Consuming foods that promote an alkaline environment can help with this, of course. What types of foods are beneficial? Well, dark leafy greens like kale, spinach, arugula, collard greens, and chard. You can incorporate these greens into salads or lightly steam or saute them. A friend of mine joined a Community Supported Agriculture or CSA program one summer and received a box of vegetables every week, including a lot of kale. She asked me, what am I going to do with all this kale? Well, I recommend chopping it up, or if you're not in a CSA, I buy it pre-chopped. I use a large saucepan or skillet, heat up some vegetable broth or water, and saute onions and mushrooms with garlic powder or fresh garlic. Then I add the chopped kale, cover the pan, and let it steam lightly for about five minutes. It turns out delicious without being overcooked. Other vegetables to include in your diet are root vegetables like carrots, parsnips, and potatoes. Cooked beans, raw nuts and seeds, and a variety of fruits also help balance an alkaline diet that's beneficial for your bones. My third tip is to be mindful of what you don't eat. Just as important as what you eat is what you don't eat. Foods that promote an acidic environment in the body can lead to minerals from your bones. Foods that create an acidic condition include meat, dairy, sugar, and gluten. In terms of what you drink, that would be alcohol, colas, and coffee, also contributing to an acidic body. My father ate these types of food and drink regularly and mostly avoided the food I suggested you eat instead. While he didn't live long enough to get osteoporosis, his body was very acidic and his health suffered for it, and he left this world when he was only 57 years old. I'm now 64 years old, and I'm much healthier than my father was when he was 35. Consider eliminating or severely limiting these acidic foods and drinks. My fourth tip is to get your blood's vitamin D to an optimal level. Maintaining an optimal level of vitamin D in your body supports healthy bones and enhances bone strength. I once heard Dr. Jill Furman say you should only supplement with vitamin D if you plan to get your blood tested for vitamin D regularly. And by regularly, he meant once or twice a year. That's the only way you'll know how much vitamin D to take as a supplement. Just because you're outside every day for your work doesn't mean your vitamin D level is good. The guy who trimmed my trees in my yard was outside for his business nearly every day. All year, he assumed his vitamin D level was fine, but then in 2020, he got this. Remember that? In 2020, he got it so badly that he had to be hospitalized for low oxygen. I asked him if they tested his blood for vitamin D while he was in the hospital, and he said yes, and it was low, and he was surprised. It never occurred to him to get his blood tested for vitamin D because he was outside every day don't assume. And it's irresponsible for your doctor to tell you how much vitamin D3 supplement you should take without testing your blood regularly. And besides that, most doctors read the wrong literature about what the best vitamin D level is for your blood. Now, after going over this topic for years, I aim to get my D level between 70 and 85 NGML, which is nanograms per milliliter. Even better, several years ago, I enrolled at a vitamin D study and my blood gets tested twice a year and I can view the results. That way, I know how much supplement to take. I've noticed that during stressful times, my vitamin D levels drop, even though I'm taking the same amount of D3 supplement. This indicates that I need to increase my supplement intake when I'm under a lot of stress. You might also consider joining the vitamin D study led by Grassroots Health. There's a link in the description box below where you can learn more. The study is investigating how maintaining a vitamin D level between 70 and 85 NGML can benefit the body, particularly in supporting immunity. I haven't had the flu 
since 1975, though I've had a few colds. Sufficient vitamin D is also known to help keep bones strong as well. My fifth tip is to consider other supplements. Dr. Shostak and I have covered supplements for building strong bones in several videos, and she continues to research this topic. In our earlier videos, we talked about our supplementation plans and any updates to that information are noted in the description box of those videos. We've also produced additional videos since then. Now on my osteoporosis playlist, the videos are sorted with the most recent video at the top. When I reversed osteoporosis, I used the Garden of Life Grow Bone System. I still take it, but I've reduced the number of capsules I take daily. There's also Algae Kill, which is similar to the Garden of Life Grow Bone product, but more expensive. We've also added Vital Nutrients K2-7, also known as MK7. But if you're taking the Grow Bone System or Algae Kill, MK7 is already in those supplements. MK7 directs calcium to the right places in your body, and it helps to regulate vitamin D. Dr. Shostak has been doing telemedicine with several of my viewers to help them navigate changes they need to make to their diet, supplementation, and exercise in order to reverse osteoporosis naturally and to create real strong bones. We discussed what it's like to work with her and what it costs in this video. Many of my viewers have had unusual circumstances and issues in their bodies that have been stopping them from building their bone density naturally. And Dr. Shostak is quite skilled at getting to the root cause. There is a link to her website's contact page in the description box if you'd like to find out more about consulting with her directly. Check out one of my other videos on the right side of the screen and I'll see you in the next video.